okay, I got some practice problems for work energy. I'm going to make these a separate videos. Um, I think I made these up, but I'm not really sure. Let's just get to it. And I printed this out. It's kind of small, so let me just read it to you. This says, a 2,000 car is on autopilot, so no one is inside, just to make sure everyone's safe. It's going 20 meters per second straight towards a wall with a spring bumper. The spring has a spring constant of 1,500 newtons per meter. How much does the spring compress when the car comes to stop? So let's draw a picture, okay? Because you always want to start with a picture. I think pictures are important. Let's put that right down there. So here's my car. That's a terrible car. That's fine. And it's driving along, and it's going to crash into this wall with a spring. And so I know the mass of this car, M, is 2,000. I like to write these things out like this, 2,000 kilograms. Uh, I'll call this V1 is 20 meters per second. Uh, and what else do I have? I have K over here. K is 1,500 newtons per meter. Now, the car is going to crash into the spring, so let's just draw it like that. Here is my, and I'm going to draw this super scrunched up, and there's my better car. And this is going to be some distance S that it gets compressed, right? So it went from here to uncompressed to here compressed. And also, I'm going to put V2 equals zero meters per second. So it stops, right? It's going to, it could rebound, but we want to know the maximum amount of compression. Okay, so here's our problem. Now we need to say how we're going to how are we going to solve this? You could think about the force of the spring pushing back on this, but you don't want to do that because the more the spring gets compressed, the greater the backwards pushing force. So <clears throat> it's, it's a non-constant force situation, a non-constant acceleration. You can't really use Newton's second law. It's just not going to work. You know, this is that F net equals MA. That's not going to work. Because the acceleration is not constant, the force is not constant. Instead, we can use work is the change in energy. The work energy principle doesn't care about the force. Um, it cares about the change in position and the work. So in order to calculate the work and the change in energy, we need to declare our system. So let's say we have a system of the car plus the spring. So as the car moves and collides with the spring, there is a force the spring pushes on the car, but those both objects are in the system, so there's not going to be any work done by that, which is really good, right? Because if I'd say work as F dot delta R or F delta R cosine theta, where F is the work, the force is doing the work, delta R is displacement, and theta is the angle between them, I still have a problem, right? Because the spring's still exerting a non-constant force. So it, this would be non-trivial to calculate. Not impossible, just non-trivial. But if I include the car and the spring in my system, then I can have two types of energy. I can have kinetic energy, one half mv squared, and I can have spring potential energy, one half ks squared. And what's gonna do work on the car? Well, yeah, there is a downward gravitational force, mg, and there is an upwards normal force in. Both of those are acting on the car the whole time. However, the car is only moving this way. So both of the angles for the work done by the gravity and the normal force are 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 is zero. So these don't do any work. The total work is zero. And that's going to be the change in kinetic energy plus the change in spring potential energy. So let's just write that out. That's going to be K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. So this is the kinetic energy at position two, the kinetic energy at position one, spring at two, spring at one. Now, two of those numbers are actually zero. This is zero. Since it stops, the final kinetic energy is zero. The initial is not. U2 is not zero, but U1 is zero. Because if in this position, how much is the spring compressed or stretched? It's not. So that's zero. That means we get the following equation. Zero equals negative one half m v1 squared plus one half k, I'll call this s2 
2 squared. That's the, the compression at position 2. And I want to solve for s. So I'm going to add that to both sides. And I'm running out of room, but I can do this. I get 1 half k s squared s2 squared equals 1 half m v1 squared. The 1 halves cancel. Uh, and then I divide by k and take the square root. s2 is going to be the square root of m v1 squared over k. So let's put that over here. s2. Can you see that? Yeah. Square root of m 2,000 v1 squared 20 squared all that over 1,500. And let's put that in our calculator. Move it so you don't see reflection. On cl clear square root 2,000 times 20 squared divided by 1500 close parentheses and I get oh 23 meters I mean that's kind of silly uh, but I picked a, a pretty low value for the spring constant um, you know it, it'd be much better to if you want to redo this problem you could say well it compresses 0.5 meters what would the spring constant have to be that might be better this isn't wrong um, it's just not realistic, right? Uh, it, this, is, this is a pretty weak spring. It'd have to move over a large distance in order to stop it. But that's the problem. The end.